Welcome, guys. I'm Tokyo Paul. I'm with my friend Michael. Hi, Michael. How are you doing? Hey, Tokyo Paul. How are you, buddy? Yeah, Good to see you, buddy. Hey, a long time to see, but yeah. <laughs>、uh, today we'll hear about Mike's story, you know, about his time in Japan and was English teaching. And the audio for this will be for the Tokyo Paul podcast. Audio comes out before the video, and、uh, so yeah. Without further ado, Mike. First question. You know, of course, I know you, but.、Uh, Can you tell us who you are or where you're from? Sure, sure.、Um, it's it's good to chat to you, Paul. I know、um, you know. Last time we caught up was in Tokyo、uh, about four years ago, three three four years ago,、oh, well, which was great. And、uh, I wish we had been able to to do so more frequently. But、um, obviously, yeah. Yeah. pandemic. Yeah. So I was just reflecting on this, and Paul, I've known you for over twenty years. Yeah. Let that sink in. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we grew up together. <laughs> um, kind of terrifying when you think about it, because I don't definitely don't even feel that old. But um, so basically, the the quick version is um, Mike. I come from a a relatively multinational background. Um, uh, I sort of spent my formative um childhood years in New Zealand, uh, which is where I am now. And、uh, and、um, at sort of towards the end of middle school, they relocated to the U.S. and I did all of my high school in、um, in the U.S. and that's you know where I got to become good friends with Paul, and uh, and um, after that moved to Canada, spent a bit of time in、um, in Japan, which we're going to get to, and sort of been hopping around ever since. With、uh, but I'm mainly based in New Zealand these days. Wow, yeah, international、right. guy. Yeah, and, and, and very nice、uh, introduction. And、uh, yeah, so、uh, of course today I'm I'm really curious to delve a little deeper、uh, about Japan and your experience there.、Um, yeah, what what got you interested in Japan? Or、uh, yeah, just, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I don't think there was ever sort of a an aha moment, but、um, I mean, you'll know from you know, I was very privileged when we were living in the U.S. to、um, to be living in a very sort of multicultural. Um, diverse、uh, part of the country, and、um, a lot of our school friends, you know, of course, were interested in different cultures, came from、um, from interesting backgrounds themselves.、Um, we had a couple of Japanese friends, I recall,、uh, and、uh, yeah, we're just interested in all kinds of things. And I've always sort of had an interest in, in other cultures and、um, in other parts of the world.、Um, I guess when I got to、um, to university, I'd、uh, I'd always been interested in languages.、Um, I wasn't doing a sort of a language degree or anything like that, but、um, but I'd done French in high school and、um, wanted to do something a little bit different. So I did a year of Spanish, and I was terrible at it. And so <laughs> yeah,、uh, no bueno.、Um, it was quite it was quite bad.、Um, so I thought, what's easier than Spanish? Ah,、oh, Japanese、What、or Chinese. No way.、Um, Mm. I yeah no we had a, a school didn't have that many、um, Asian languages but I thought okay let's just try something might be you know why not why not give it a go as kind of an elective subject and、um, uh, the Chinese courses were all full so it ended up becoming Japanese and so、um, so I, I kicked that off and I'd heard sort of oh my god it's going to be really really difficult and things but I ended up doing a couple of years of、um, of Japanese、um, as an sort of an academic side hustle.、Um, Which is great, you know. You end up using a different part of your brain and whatnot. So, as you as you know,、um, and then I think after the second year, my lecturer sort of、um, uh, uh, showed us that you know showed some of the students that there was a、um, a, a summer scholarship going、um, in Kyushu and encouraged a couple of us who were sort of you know had only gotten a year of Japanese under our belt and were able to say "watashi no namae wa" whatever this. Um, to to apply, and so、um, I ended up getting a scholarship and、um, nice. spending a summer in in Kyushu,、um, which was、yeah. challenging, I think, particularly given the, the the sort of the low my low level of language at that point, but but pretty transformative. I mean, it was a it was an amazing place,、um, really really cool. Got to spend some time at Kyushu University doing sort of Asian studies topics and things, and then.、Um, By the time I got back to Canada, which is where I was sort of studying full time,、um, it was sort of yeah, you know, I'd love to go back there and, and live there again if I have the chance. And so when I finished、um, undergrad, I、um, didn't really have a plan. You know, global financial crisis was、mm. looming. You know, it was about to hit. And then、mm. 
Um, so I applied for uh, the JET program, yeah. Japan Exchange and Teaching. And um, long story short, you know, um, ended up uh, in Japan in, in the summer of 2008 and wow. spent two, two amazing years um, yeah. living in the middle of absolute nowhere. Yeah. Oh, what city were you stationed? City is a generous word, Paul. Um, it was not a city. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was basically um, the absolute middle of, middle of nowhere countryside. Um, it was a town of 10,000 people in Ishikawa province. So okay. yeah, out in, in Hokuriku, which you're familiar yeah. with, um, <laughs> on the west coast of, of Honshu. Um, so uh, we often joke that you could tell where we were because um, we'd have um, Korean rubbish um, washing yeah. up on the beach. Yeah. Um yeah, so I lived so uh I lived about an hour south of Kanazawa, which is sort of the pre the prefectural capital in a place called um Kaga. And uh um it was sort of a part of um part of the rice bowl of Japan. Um used to be very wealthy, you know, had a lot of uh sort of cultural artifacts and um um you know, onsen towns, uh, kutaniyaki, uh, lacquerware, you know, all kinds of things. So, so it's, you know, definitely cult, uh, sort of a cultural hotspot, but um, just slightly off the beaten path. Yeah. Um, what was kind of confronting for me, I guess, is that I'd, I'd, I'd only been, you know, I'd, I'd, the only place I'd been prior to that work was, I think, Tokyo, Osaka, and, um, and Fukuoka, you know, all of which are pretty sizable cities. Yeah. In some cases, very sizable. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'd, I'd kind of gotten a, uh, some idea of what to expect from the person who was, who was in the role before me. But, um, but essentially, you know, it was a town of 10,000 yeah. spread out over, you know, a bunch of different, um, spread out over the, basically a countryside. And so you had um, very small, like small villages and, um, and rice paddies in between them, far basically farm life. Yeah. So we got off, uh, it was my, myself and another um, person who were, who were basically assigned to no there were two other people sorry yeah um three foreigners one one american one uh in English, in addition to me and uh and it, it turned out when we arrived that we were the only foreigners in the town um okay. that we were aware of um oh, we, we eventually found a couple of uh of others who'd been there for you know more long timers but um you realized quite quickly that it was like ah oh, okay we're not in kansas anymore it's just well us and one or two other <laughs> I remember I remember getting off the plane and uh, being met by my new boss, my supervisor. So I was assigned yeah. to a um, a local um, to the local city government in our, in the board of education, and um, my boss sort of introduced herself and said, "Hi, my name is you know XX Sun, and I'm uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm your supervisor." And I was like, "Oh, wow, she speaks English. Great, great." great. Oh, yeah. Um, but it turned out. Those two sentences were the only English she spoke, and she'd practiced them for some time. Um, so uh, from then on out, it was in the deep end. <laughs> wow! So yeah. it was Japanese from then on. Yep. Like instructions, yep. conversations, or yeah. gestures, or whatnot. So I mean, I I I was thankful that I'd done a couple of years of you know university level study, yeah. but it certainly wasn't the you know you could you could have you could hold a basic conversation, but um, pretty quickly you know became a bit more difficult so wow. yeah. but but i mean I, I think that was that was part of the that was an advantage in some respects because well i was like 22 or something and you know um lots of energy and so it was was gonna you know i just made the effort to to learn some of the language and more out of necessity than anything else right so so, so your japanese yeah. improved yeah pretty quickly yeah. um i can't say it's that amazing right now but um i think the, you know after after getting sort of set up and um and uh sort of getting to you know settling into the the, the new environment um one, once i started my job i realized quite quickly that um you know it, it essentially involved working out of uh, the, the the government building and in my case um doing you know english language teaching at a, at a number of different schools in the area so i had nine schools that i would sort of go yeah. to on a rotational yeah. basis most of them were um elementary schools and okay. um and a lot of the teachers there you know there, there wasn't a formal english language curriculum at the time it was more sort of an opportunity for kids to um to 
get exposure to sort of you know what the what the outside world looks like, particularly in some of these rural communities where um, they didn't have much you know exposure to um, people from who were not you know weren't from that very little that very area. So um, I remember being struck once going into a school and um, like a first grader or something said, "Hi, are you a foreigner?" And I was like, "Yes, yes, I am. Well spotted." And uh, and and like, "Are you Chinese?" And I was like, oh, <laughs> swing and a miss, you know, try again, you know. But it just struck me that, you know, there's in some places it, it is still very, very insular and um, there is, you know, exposure to other cultures and other nationalities. So I'd say, you know, there was definitely an English teaching component, but most of it was literally just teaching how the rest of the world works and, you know, um, yeah, things like that, you know internationalization is, is how it was described by, by some some of my friends so yeah wow. oh my God. <laughs> that was a great explanation of well then uh what was like your like best moment there i i guess in uh the inaka life was it a festival was it a yeah a that's that's a that's a challenging one i mean i i think there, there's there were so many good memories i mean um i think what the kind of overriding um, advantage of being in the middle of nowhere was that there was this sort of traditional sense of community. Um, you had that kind of small town life where there was a lot of outdoorsy stuff. There was a lot of um, of neighborhood stuff. Like you didn't you didn't have the kind of the the big city um, isolation that can you know like it's it's one of those paradoxes, right? You know, in a place with with millions and millions of people, it can be it can be somehow lonelier than than being in a place that where there's there's nothing but but paddocks or rice paddies and but you, you kind of know your neighbors so mm. um i mean i i, I uh, heaps you know in terms of outdoor life you know you could, you could go to the beach have a barbecue i mean wow. we do sea kayaking camping <laughs> mountain climbing uh paragliding once which is which wow. is really fun i want to try that I uh, organized a soccer tournament um, in Nagano, uh, for, just with just with foreign foreign players, yeah. international talent. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the sort of overriding, it's not a single memory, but I think you know, going back to the language, um, being in an immersion environment where you were working with kids um, quite a lot who don't really tailor their their level of Japanese to you, right? They just speak naturally and normally in their own dialect. Meant that I was able to pick it up pretty quickly, mm. and um, it wasn't academic, you know, it wasn't like yeah. a balanced, um, you know, um, skill set, but conversationally, you know, you're able to really sort of blend in and, um, and, uh, and become sort of part of that community. Um, um, yeah, that's not, I realize that didn't really answer your question, but um, I think on the professional front, though, um, yeah. I did have a chance uh, to organize a, um, an international trip for our, wow. Uh, for the head of the the board of education um yeah. and basically it was a it was a trip to uh, boston and new york boston, uh, for oh. some sort of school, school system curriculum research yeah. they're looking to build a new school and model it after a couple of u.s institutions and oh. for me that was kind of like the you know chance to stretch stretch those intercultural and like linguistic skills to uh, uh, organizational skills to sort of um pull that off and basically i mean these guys didn't speak a lick of english you know so yeah. Was sort of managing all of that, and it's probably fair to say that that experience um, was pretty foundational to you know um, to me you know working out what I wanted to do later in life as well. So, yeah. So well, no, definitely. I mean, it was it, two years was not very long, but um, it definitely had a big impact. Yeah. Oh wow! That, and then you gave a lot of details, which is really impressive. Um, so then, if I uh, could get a maybe overall, what's your impression of the JET program? Uh, obviously, I, I mentioned and you mentioned you, you're part of the JET program, which is very prestigious, but what's your impression? You know, would you recommend it to others? <laughs> like, what's your, I guess, overall impression? Yeah. I think, I mean, I, I don't I don't have to say I haven't really followed how it's evolved in the last um, sort of 10 plus years, but I, I, I'm sure there have, been, there have been changes, but I think, you know, in terms of a, a soft power um, tool, by the Japanese government, it's it's kind of it's second to none, you know. Like mm. the fact that they're able to attract sort of young 
um, relatively qualified uh, people from all over the sort of the English speaking world and um, and bring them into these communities and develop these these types of links and then go back to wherever they came from as as kind of ambassadors for Japan in some respect um, is probably like the benefit of that is pretty hard to measure, but I imagine it would be substantial. Um, for the individuals, I mean, for people like myself, you know, I had a, I had an excellent experience. I don't think that's always borne out by everyone, and I think you know the 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 predominantly rural focus of a lot of this means that you know I think for some people it can be a little bit confronting when they have an image of Akihabara or something like that. You know, like it's you know it's it's oh this is not the Japan I was expecting. You know, all of my neighbors are ninety years old, and uh, wow. you know there's no other young people, um, and you know the big city is several hours away. But I think if you come in open-minded and just keen to sort of do something different and it's, you know, explore a new place and get to know, um, get out of your comfort zone a little bit, um, it's it's amazing, you know. And, and I think for me at, the, at that time in my life, yep. you know, early 20s, pretty awesome, you know. Gave me a chance to sort of save a bit of money, get some experience, um, learn about a different culture and then, um, you know, have basically that, um, that sort of wealth of experience for the rest of my life, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say I, I certainly couldn't fault it. You know, it was a, it was, it was a really good experience. Yeah, and, and I guess in terms of the overall experience, um, I'm I'm curious to know for yourself. I think you mentioned a lot, but uh, already, uh, what was like maybe one of your biggest learnings, and then like uh, in terms of anyone who would be interested in you know teaching english living in japan or even you know the jet program uh um from your experience like you know could you give like a tip from your personal learnings like what was your biggest learning that could be maybe translated into a tip or uh recommendation you mean you mean in terms of just life there or or in terms yeah, of being prepared uh, for, yeah, for working you to or... but yeah life or teaching or anything yeah for you you know your biggest learning yeah i mean i think I think the from you know this is just just um just my perspective but I think the people who really struggled the most were those that had a pretty pre preset um mm -hmm. idea of exactly what they're going to be getting into yeah um and you know yeah. there were people that that left early or or felt that you know oh my, my the schools that I work at or school that I work work for doesn't understand me and there's communication gaps and things and inevitably you're gonna you're gonna face those types of challenges so um you know there is a degree of resilience that's required and a degree of as i said before sort of open-mindedness to things just not necessarily um being straightforward or being you know or going the way you expect um so it's really a matter of sort of your flexibility and, and ability to bounce back and just kind of take it on the chin and realize that you know what a, what a, you know who who knew or who, who would have thought that you'd be in the middle of this awesome country um living this type of life right and then just realizing that it's kind of what you make of it um yeah. so it's a sort of a waffly vague answer but um i think Great. you know it, it, it is a it is a very different society at least from 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 mine and, and yours and um and there is that type of you know there's that sense of exceptionalism that you often get you know in, in, in japanese culture and attitudes and and um there is a lot that makes japan special but um there's also, you know, just remembering who you are and, and you know, where you come from and the fact that that for them, for, for many people in, in, in Japan, is kind of cool and unknown as well. So, yeah. Um, so just keeping a bit of perspective as well, I thought. Yeah. Perspective. Yeah. Uh, that's very important. It sounds like uh, you did have perspective. And you mentioned you were there two years. So I'm curious, like, uh, after the second year, uh, you know, what, what made you think, like, you know, this is a time to like move on or yeah so yeah that, that's that's a really good question i think um because getting into you know going through this program the application process i mean for anyone who's familiar with jet program is pretty lengthy it's takes mm -hmm. you know it can be like over a year basically you know there's like real, it's quite rigid time frames you have to sort of do weird interviews and things like that but um so, you know, it wasn't sort of a last minute thing. You have to, you have to do some prep. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it's, you know, so so I think a lot of people are like, right, boom, those who get it, they're like, off we go. Um, I'm going to do this for as long as I can or, you know, just want to do it for one year or you have a sort of a set view.
in my experience, a lot of a lot of other sort of jets within Ishikawa uh, Prefecture were very. Um, they were surprised at how much their life, their idea of what their life plan was going to be, changed. Yeah. Um, so I had people who were sort of like, oh, I don't, don't even know if I really want to do this. You know, what's Japan like? It seems so weird. Is why is none of the food cooked? Um, <laughs> it's like it's meant to be like that. Yeah. Um, and and then ended up staying for like five, six, seven, eight years. You know, mm -hmm. married to someone local. You know, integrated wow. fully. And then others who were sort of like, oh my god, this is my dream. I've been wanting to live in Japan since I was three years old. Oh my um, realizing it, realizing it just wasn't for them, and that they yeah. wanted to do something different and move on. Yeah. Um, so it just that's just life, though, right? Like, just yeah. you don't know how it's going to go. Um, I found that um, for me, I could very easily have stayed longer. I mean, it was yeah. it was such a it was such a um at, at, by the time i was sort of into my second year i, I felt pretty integrated I had a great group of friends um uh you know um just quite you know quite a good life um decent income and enjoyable work life to be honest i, I enjoyed working with kids it, you know there um, there's that level of curiosity and excitement about learning english even if it was quite basic that I think you lose a little bit as as you get older and like hit those teenage years. Yeah. Um. It's, it, well, especially in in um, systems education systems where it gets quite rigid and you you know you um you, you're learning for the exam. But um. But yes, you just got to have a lot of fun and um. And I think, but for me, I think it was sort of not wanting to wait too long before thinking about my next steps. And and for me, I think. I realized pretty quickly because I'd, I'd done a, a political science undergrad degree, um, which I think, you know, liberal arts was something that almost everyone had a degree and I realized I have no technical skills. Oh. Um, and so I, I yeah, decided I had to go basically go back to school and um, go from teacher back to student, I think. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of what sparked that. And, and I ended up moving to um to Australia uh, shortly there, shortly afterwards to do um, to do grad school, post grad. Yeah. Wow. Uh, really appreciate it. That sex way to my other question, which is, uh, yeah, how was like life after Jet or after Japan? Life after Japan. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I mean, I will say, you know, I think I think none of your um your viewers or listeners will be surprised that reverse culture shock is a thing. It is. Um, I think anyone who goes from one place to another, yeah, exactly. It's you know, even for a short period, sometimes um, can be affected by that kind of sense of um, dislocation or not quite belonging, or um, or you know, your, your your friends and family not really understanding your experience and, and how things, you know, who you are um, after after time away. Um, yeah, yeah, lies. I mean, I I, I certainly felt that. Um, I felt that uh a lot of the the things that you know i, I started looking in the rear view um with these kind of rose tinted glasses right like oh japan was so idyllic you know i left all these friends why did i do this you know what was i thinking you know i had things were so good you know yeah. uh, and now now i'm now i'm off to school to get into more debt what am i thinking you know <laughs> um but uh i think i mean what helped i think was you know i met i met um some uh, some Japanese people while I was so I was, I was bouncing around a little bit before I moved to Australia and ended up in Vancouver for several months and worked at a um, of all places at a, at a local izakaya um, <laughs> but that was that was that was a good way to sort of keep a keep one foot in the sort of the Japan tent while also you know um, kind of moving on um, so you know I got to yell orders in Japanese at night and then during the day I'd be like you know planning a, a ski trip or something like that so um but uh but i did yeah no i think connect staying connected to um to some part of your, your japan experience when once you leave i think was it was key for me to not feel like it was just a sudden break yeah. um you know because it can feel quite isolating that way right yeah and i was very lucky my um i i met my now now wife um shortly after i'd moved um, moved away from Japan and, and she she'd spent time in Japan as well so you know, we had that that sort of connection as well which was good wow that sounds amazing and yeah th thank you so much for your time yeah, actually uh well my last question would just be like are you uh, available for yeah any uh you know connection online or do you have a specific place people can you know find you or you know just connect with you uh, on social media um I 
am not super active on social media these days. Um, I, but I'm very happy to be to be uh, contacted. I think what I might do is get in touch with you and and um, uh, figure out a way to, you know, if there are people who are interested in, in connecting or, or chatting about the experience or any aspects of, of what I've been through, and, um, I'm, we can connect maybe maybe via you. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'll I'll leave your just you know first name on in the you know, title and description. Uh, hopefully you're you know in the premiere. Uh, chatting with uh, everyone but uh yeah again thanks mike for your time today guys this was uh, mike and his experience in japan uh yeah have a great day mike and thank you for your time yeah thanks you too paul i no, appreciate it great to great to chat and uh great to go down memory lane yeah man yeah definitely